Good morning, and welcome to Life in Christ Lutheran Church as we continue in the Christmas season, the first Sunday of Christmas. I'm glad that you're here this morning. We have the opportunity to come once again to the manger and, and marvel and glory at uh, marvel at God's glory uh, that uh, resides there in the person of Christ. Uh, we have the the Nunc Dimittis as part of our gospel text this morning, and uh, we'll be focusing a little bit on Exodus 13, our Old Testament lesson this morning. Uh, but also, too, you know, just the opportunity to sing those Christmas hymns and, and songs. And, and um, I don't know, there's just something about this time of year that, that defies uh, explanation, but it just feels right, you know? You get that feeling? Good, good, I'm glad. <laughs> there's safety in numbers. So with that, let's go ahead and begin our opening hymn. Uh, now sing we, now rejoice. Let's rise for the invocation. God has called us to worship this morning, and so we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Let us take a moment and confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are sinful and unclean. We have taken for granted the free gift of salvation you give us through Jesus. 
Help us to focus on the reason for the season, the birth of your Son. Forgive us, O God, and let us depart in peace according to your word. For the sake of your Son, Jesus, who came to save us from our sins. Friends in Christ, receive the free gift that Jesus offers, the forgiveness of sins. As a called and ordained servant of our newborn King, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Isaiah chapter 52, the Lord has bared his holy arm from before, uh, I'm sorry, but his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of our newborn king, which is beyond our understanding, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our, for our salvation from Christ, the Prince of Peace, for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, for we have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Oh God, our maker and redeemer, you wonderfully created us and in the incarnation of your son yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation, please be seated. We continue with our Old Testament lesson this morning. Good morning. morning. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 13, 1 through 3a, and 11 through 15. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and a beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand the Lord brought you out from this place. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers, and shall give it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. Or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn a man among your sons you shall redeem. And when in time to come your son asks you, What does this mean? You shall say to him, By a strong hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of men and the firstborn of animals. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. <coughs> the epistle is found in Colossians Chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. And above all these, Put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Out of honor for Jesus, who is the Christ, we rise for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, my eyes have seen your salvation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to Present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, that every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. 
And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord... They returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Congregation may be seated. We continue in song with What Child Is This?
Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. For indeed you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it might just be me, but as we leave this weekend celebration of Christ's birth, we kind of enter into this, this limbo time of Christmas yet looking forward to a new year, yet not quite there yet, and what do we do now? As we hover in this holiday season, it's not going to take long. Christmas carols will be off of the radio. Christmas decorations will come down, and it'll happen in almost a blink of an eye. At least that's the way it was last year, if I remember correctly. While the world is still trying to hang on to some last bit of holiday cheer and and vacation time before it disappears, we here in the church, we get busy. We get busy unpacking this gift that God has given us in the Christ child. We get busy exploring what or who this gift is what he's come to accomplish for us. And that's really where our Old Testament lesson is this morning. As we get into Exodus chapter 13, the birth of Christ isn't about some ideal peace on earth, as if, uh, wouldn't it be nice if we could, dot, dot, dot. It's not about a peace that that we can pretend that we have or an ideal that we hope will happen someday. It's, It's more substantial than that. And it may seem a bit of a downer so close to our Christmas celebration, but this baby did not necessarily come to live a long life. He came to die. That's why he's here. He came to do the job of the lamb that was to be given in exchange for the life of a firstborn child. As Moses outlines in Exodus 13, a family has a son, a lamb has to die. Period. That's the way this goes. But the redemption of the firstborn that the Lord commanded in Exodus, that's really the picture of what Christ came to do. That's his job. That's what he's come to accomplish. The fact is that Jesus was born because God the Father chose him to be the lamb, to take your place and mine, and not just ours here but that of all creation. Already in the Old Testament, God wanted his people Israel to know that. And he wants us today to remember it. Israel was once sitting right where we are this morning. They'd celebrated the high point of the year, really the high point of their lives. God had just brought them out of bondage and slavery in Egypt, killing all of the firstborn of the Egyptians, sparing their sons. Why? Because the blood of a Passover lamb was painted on their doorposts. The blood of a Passover lamb was painted on their lintel. Coming up from Israel would be another grand, uh, coming up for Israel would be another grand celebration passing through the Red Sea, their, their final escape from Pharaoh's army. Maybe there's a parallel there as we look forward to New Year's Eve and Day and NCAA bowl games, of course. 
Yet at this busy intersection, God stops. He hits the pause button to, to teach people a lesson that they would never forget. Each time you have a firstborn, bring a lamb and kill it. That's what I want you to do. So that you always remember who I am and who you are and what I do for you. So to remember God's mighty action on behalf of his people, he calls us to remember the death of his firstborn who sets you and I free from bondage and slavery to sin and death. And that's really what redemption is. Buying us back so that we would be free people, children of God. It's a price paid for us. It's a price that we can't pay ourselves. So on the night of the Passover, all the firstborn died unless they were redeemed, unless the lamb was slaughtered for them, blood on the door, all of that. But the reality is that not just the firstborn, but, but all sinners face the prospect of death. What a mess of a world we're in, yeah. Yeah. So here comes the firstborn of God himself, born to be the Lamb of God, born to take your place and mine, slaughtered on the cross so that we won't be killed, that we might be set free. Don't let the cozy manger scene fool you. This baby is the firstborn of Mary, sent to redeem all people from their sins. I can't help but remember that cartoon with the bumper sticker on the back of the donkeys. My child is an honor roll student. My child is an honor roll student. My child is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's funny when you read it in your email, but it's true in a very real way, that's who this child is. And perhaps it's a great honor, uh, irony when Joseph and Mary bring Jesus into the temple to make an offering for him because he is their firstborn son. But it does serve as a reminder that Jesus fulfills the law for us. They're killing pigeons or turtle doves, probably pigeons, for Jesus to fulfill the law. But he, this child, is the fulfillment of the law for us. And in a great reversal, he's going to be offered up on a cross to redeem Mary and Joseph. And you and I, and all of creation, shedding his blood to buy us back. This little baby who seems to escape death because his parents had a couple of pigeon necks twisted instead ends up being broken in his body on a tree by divine choice. That's God's choice for you and for me. But just as death, uh, the death of the firstborn signaled the beginning of salvation for Israel, so Jesus' resurrection is his passing through death and bringing you and I with him. And that's the beauty of Christmas. Is that not only this child does this child come to die, but he comes to rise again, defeating sin, defeating death once and for all. Of course, not everyone was there when Israel left Egypt. There's a whole generation coming up as they wander around in the wilderness. And throughout the whole Old Testament, there's generations of children who hadn't witnessed firsthand those events. And they would grow up too. So whenever a firstborn was redeemed and that lamb had to be sacrificed, the children were taught to ask that good Lutheran question. What does this 
mean? Yeah. What does this mean? And the dads were supposed to answer them. And the answer didn't start with it was a dark and stormy night. They were supposed to relive the story, tell the story once again. A long time ago, God rescued us from Egypt. When the firstborn were killed, the lamb's blood protected us. The lamb gave its life so that our firstborn would not die. And isn't it interesting that every year as they would part, uh, um, celebrate the Passover year after year after year, they told the story again as if they were there. Why? Because the Lamb of God that was coming was for them. Just like it's for you. Just like he's for me. And so it is with the gifts by which our Lord delivers his salvation to us and reminds us of his saving works. What does it mean that, that I had water poured on my head when I was an infant? What does it mean that, that we pass by that, that font every time we come into the sanctuary and dip our fingers in the water and remind ourselves with the sign of the cross upon our forehead? What does it mean when the pastor tells me every single week that as a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins? What does that mean? Why does he do that? It means that because Jesus died for you, every stain, wrinkle, blemish, every character flaw, everything that you have said, thought, and done that was adverse to God's will is forgiven. And you are God's child, endowed with an identity that will be never taken from you. What does it mean when we eat and drink the body and blood of Christ? And the pastor says that it's in, with, and under everyday elements of bread and wine. What does that mean? It's the Passover meal. When the Israelites ate it, it reminded them that lambs were killed to save their firstborn. And when you and I partake of that meeting, that, that meal, we are eating and drinking the body and blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world because He promises that that's what's going on. He's doing that for us. And we are reminded in the midst of this that Jesus took our place to save us that our sins are forgiven, and that we will live forever. Oh, what a gift, huh? The redeeming of the firstborn of Israel was set to be a reminder of what God had done and a promise of what he would later do in Christ Jesus. In the same way, the water and the word and the body and blood are Christ's promise to you and to me. That he has indeed taken our place. That he has indeed redeemed you and I. That we are part of his people. And so in this season of Christmas, we, we celebrate the birth of Mary's firstborn son. But he is also the only begotten son of God. The one who came into this world for a purpose to redeem, to buy back, to, to ransom, to be in the place of and save. Not just the firstborn kids, but everyone. To save you and me. It's easy to get caught up in the world's celebration of, of Christmas with all the music and the lights and the holiday cheer. And that's not necessarily bad. That's not a bad thing. But it is important that we are reminded that this child, this Bethlehem child, this Emmanuel child was born for a much greater reason than to give us an excuse to exchange gifts and party. 
He came into this world to be the lamb who was given in our place. And speaking of parties, we're going to be a part of a never-ending party when we get to be reunited with this lamb resting in his loving arms for all of eternity, a celebration without end. That's something to look forward to, isn't it? Christ, he's God's gift to you and to me, and he's come, and that means new birth and life everlasting for us. The firstborn, the one born on Christmas is the one who brings us a peace that passes human understanding, that keeps our hearts and our minds in him until the day of his return. May God grant it. Amen. Friends in Christ, now having heard the word of God, we have the opportunity to join our voices together and respond, confessing our common Christian faith. I invite you to rise as we do just that. In the words of the Nicene Creed, we confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer as we pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. Wonderful Counselor, we praise and thank you for guiding us with the word of Christ, a word that dwells richly in us. Bless all pastors and teachers of your word that they would teach and admonish your people with all of your wisdom so that whatever we do in word or deed, we do it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to God the Father through him, O God of our salvation. Amen. Mighty God, you created this world and everything in it through your powerful word, and you still take care of it. Continue to watch over and work through all who lead and serve our nation, our state, even our local communities. Lead and guide all first responders and members of the military as they carry out their duties to protect and to serve. O oh God of our salvation, Amen. everlasting Father, you are gracious and compassionate. You're slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. We ask for your encouragement, your healing, and your care for all of those who are struggling with their health. Especially we lift up to you this morning, those that are on our 516 list and so many who have come down and been stricken with COVID, especially over these last few weeks. Connected with those that we name on our hearts before you now, we ask that you would heal the brokenness, heal the disease, heal the hearts of those who grieve the loss of so close to them. O oh God of our salvation, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, we praise and thank you for the peace that we have in you. 
empower us and all of your missionary people to embrace the opportunities that you've given us to share the gift of your redemption. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear us and answer us through Jesus Christ, our newborn King. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. We close our worship this morning in song. Let us all with gladsome voice.
apologize for that. We'll get to the bottom of that for sure. Uh, congregation, please be seated. Um, once again, Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming to worship this morning. It's, it's been a really loaded weekend. I, I pray God's richest blessings throughout the week as, as you just bask in the glory and, and relax and uh, enjoy the gift that God has given us in Christ Jesus. Uh, a couple of things that I, I wanted to pass um, on to you is that, I, again, I'm, I'm excited and grateful that you came to worship this morning. And for those of you who are joining online, uh, thank you for, for joining in. Um, these white cards are in the seat backs in front of you. Uh, please fill one of those out and place it in the offering plate uh, before you leave this morning. And also, too... Um, not a lot going on this week, but please pick up your announcements. Uh, the 516 list is on here. Uh, I believe Treasuring God's Word is on here as well, and, and some few things that are, that are coming up. There's no uh, Sunday school or Bible class this week, um, and Sunday school is going to be uh, taking one more week off. But um, the church office is scheduled to be closed. It's been... It's been quite a few weeks here, uh, and uh, we just need to give Connie and, and Pam, and, and I appreciate the time off as well. So, uh, of course, it will be available for, for emergencies. Anything that comes up, you need to get a hold of me. Uh, you can do that by email or give me a call, um, but, uh, but the office is going to be closed. Uh, all, of the, all of this stuff is going to be in our announcement package, so please pick that up. Um, outside of that, I don't know that there are any other announcements. So go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great week.